Can y'all believe that there are still people paying off last year's Christmas debt? Let's talk about it. I saw a article that said 25% of Americans are still paying off Christmas from last year. Oh my gosh. While simultaneously plan on spending more this, this year. This year just keeps going, keeps going. And so I find that to be very interesting. So Rachel, I'm gonna hit you with a couple of facts. Okay. And I want you to react okay. and let's get into this. So the stats say that on average, Americans are going to spend $875 okay. on Christmas. And that okay. kind of shakes out to a little over 600 on like gifts for like immediate family, mm -hmm. coworkers, then another around 200 on like decorations, like miscellaneous yep. things. And then another hundred on just kind of like random. Okay. Oh, like that guy over there needed a gift kind of thing. Okay. What do you think about that number? Uh, it doesn't sound like terrible to me. I thought it would be more. Yes. I would have thought at least 1200 in my head. I thought it'd be over a thousand. For the average family, yeah. like that's not just Christmas gifts. This is like the whole holiday season. This is the holiday season. Yeah. And part of me goes, okay, eight seventy five. Couldn't we have like stacked up a little money throughout the year throughout the, uh -huh. to and make seven, that happen? I know. The U.S. has a sickness when it comes to spending money. Twenty two percent of Americans went into debt to purchase their gifts. On average, people spend a thousand dollars. It's alarming how much people went into debt just to pay for a thousand. Did you go into debt? As someone who has $47,000 worth of debt, I have been asked this question a lot, what we are doing for Christmas. And this year we have decided that we are buying presents for my four-year-old and my two-year-old, but we're not doing anything else like for our extended family. We're not doing anything for each other, etc. Furthermore, we started buying a lot earlier this year. Normally we wait until December and so we have to take it out of like one check and that has always been really hard because then we can't shop sales or etc so this year i have been buying things like a little bit at a time but i also plan we have like money that we're setting aside so that come black friday we'll be able to look and don't worry i've been watching like the stuff that we're getting my kids for months so i'll be able to tell if it's actually on a good deal or not i tried to do that with prime day deals like a couple weeks ago and i thought it was all week long not just two days so miss prime day deals so I'm going to be checking for um, Black Friday deals and then we're just going to be kind of shopping that. I have already kind of broken down what I know my kids would like and figured out the best combination of things to be able to get them and do it on a budget. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely going to look a lot different this year, but I think overall it will be okay and we'll be able to put more money towards debt this way. So that's what we're doing. Now, it really boggles my mind that there are people out here that wait last minute to start saving up for Christmas when you have a whole 364 days before Christmas is here to start saving up for it. There is no reason why you should be going in debt to buy Christmas gifts for someone who really doesn't even need it and really isn't gonna use it anyway. We buy Christmas gifts from our, for our kids, they break it in like two weeks. They forget about the things that they don't break in a month. Yeah, go ahead and start saving for Christmas. School done started, kids got their school clothes. Now it's time to save up for the Christmas presents. Christmas come at the same time every single year, but for whatever reason, we wait till the last, you know, minute, last week, two weeks before Christmas start, to try to get our money right. Try to, you know, do this, do that, which ends up putting us in a bad situation because now we either overspending, now we got to put it on a credit card, we put ourselves in a bind, then we have to call Nate. <laughs> But if we go ahead and be proactive and plan accordingly, you know, we can go ahead and set us a budget, $2,000, however much you want to spend, depending on how many people you want to, you know, give something for Christmas. So it's August right now. We in mid-August. We can set you a budget right now. Maybe take out $100, $115 every paycheck. That way, by the time Black Friday get here, you straight. You plan for this. You can really go in and enjoy getting your loved ones gifts without stressing, without overspending, without putting yourself in a bad situation financially. And you ain't gotta wait till March, April till your taxes come because you planned accordingly. You know what I'm saying? I'm just letting y'all know now. I don't wanna hear y'all complaining when Christmas come around. The holidays are coming and I do not want you to regret your holiday spending. There is a dark side to holiday debt. It causes so many issues. Every year, consumer spending peaks during the holiday season mid-November to December. 71% of Americans spend over $1,000 just during the holiday buying gifts. 14% spend $2,000 or more. Now here's the shocker. 
41% of Americans finance 90% of their holiday spending. And these are purchases that they put on their credit card. Creditors and retailers encourage bad consumer behavior. Why? Because they make tons of money. The more cards you have, the more holiday spending you're gonna do. Now, 19% of Americans spend four months financing the holiday spending they've done. And if you're paying the minimum payment, you're only paying interest on your credit card. Now, during Black Friday, I'm gonna make it my priority to protect my clients and you. And here's why this is important, because during the holidays, Black Friday, and so on, you are gonna overspend. Now, I want you to enjoy spending money responsibly. Listen very closely. I'm gonna give you three secrets to avoid holiday debt and holiday regret. Secret number one, make a holiday plan and a holiday budget. Secret number two, use credit wisely. It probably feels good to spend future money because you have 30 days to pay it. But again, this is what the credit card companies want you to do. It's literally a trap. Make sure you avoid that behavior. Now, credit cards have big advantages over debit cards. So if you have the ability to use a credit card in the same manner you would use a debit card, you are winning, my friend. People are gonna be more thoughtful about their purchases if you feel that you're paying cash for everything versus you borrowing money. Secret number three, and this is the most important, pay off your holiday debt. Do not let it sit around for months because you're gonna regret it. And you don't wanna start your new year with even more debt. You wouldn't have to deal with late payments, fees, penalties, none of that. If you follow these steps, you're not gonna have any holiday regret. A big part of knowing how you can be financially responsible is by knowing how much can you really spend and spending the right amount. Enjoy the holiday, do it responsibly, make sure you start your new year in a great credit standards. And if you have collections, charge-offs, late payments, it's time to remove them. You wanna start 2023 as strong as you can be. If you need help with your credit, let me know. Follow for more. Hey guys, Mama B here, here to teach you the things I learned the hard way, so hopefully you don't have to. Uh, so Christmas is 52 days away, and we are not going into debt for a holiday this year. We're not doing that, we're sticking to a budget, and we're gonna be smart about our expenditures. Um, I have found in the past, it's not the gifts that we have planned for our friends and family that make us go over budget, it's all the extra things. So I made a little list of just things we don't really think of, but really do impact our budget. Um, so things like decorations, I don't personally spend my money on decorations, but if you do, you buy a couple new things every year, that's gonna eat into your budget. Um, baking, I love baking as a gift, I think it's so sweet, but if you weren't planning on doing it and with the co uh, rising cost of groceries, that is going to be a big expense. Um, if somebody invites you over for dinner and you take a bottle of wine for the host, that is going to be an expense. Um, gift wrap and name tags and tape, all those things, those are an expenditure you have to think about. Holiday meals are a huge one. That's a mega expense in all kinds of ways. Um, entertainment, if you go take your kids to see Santa, those pictures cost a fortune now because they can charge you whatever and you're gonna pay it, right? Um, charity donations, great way to spend your money, but you have to budget, you have to plan, you need to know how much you can donate this year. Um, higher utility bills, because if we're having family and stuff, or we're all home for the holidays, our heating bill's gonna be higher, and if we have Christmas lights, then, our, you know, that's gonna, that cost goes up. Postage, if you're sending gifts to friends and family, wherever, postage is very expensive now, so that is part of the cost of the gift. Um, travel. Whether it be near or far, there is gas consumption or airplane or whatever it is and food and entertainment, all the things that go with travel. Um, there's tons of extra expenditures. Mine, my bad one is stockings because I just think, oh, it's $5 here, it's $10 there. It's really easy to for that to add up. So we're going to be smart about our budgets this year and we're going to be mindful. So for something like Christmas shopping, how do you help somebody still be giving and put thought into a gift without overspending? My favorite way and something I've been talking about for a very long time is creating a gift closet. So if you are shopping ahead of time and you're planning ahead of time, you already know the loved ones that you want to buy for, right? You know that way ahead. This isn't someone that just spur of the moment came up and you're like, okay, I'm putting them on my list. These are people you've known for a lifetime. You know what they like. You 
you know what they need. You have the entire year to do planning. You can find where the sales are. There's Black Friday sales. There's so many ways that you can save money ahead of time and then just keep those gifts for a time that you're going to, to present it to them. You don't have to wait until right before Christmas to buy those things. And also, save the money ahead. If I know that I'm gonna spend a good two, $300 on each person for Christmas or whatever the budget is for each person and plan that budget ahead of time too, then I can say, okay, I have 12 months to save or I have 11 months to save. How much do I need to save per month? And put that in your budget budget for it. Everything is doable as long as you're planning ahead. I got a thousand dollars saved up for Christmas. That includes decorations and that includes presents. That is it. I'm not spending a penny more over that. I don't understand how y'all go into debt for Christmas when y'all know Christmas is the exact same day every single year. The same day, December 25th. Why are you not prepared for this day? But let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Leave a like, hit the subscribe button. We'll see y'all next time.